morning, and thank you for joining me today for The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live this morning from Palm Springs, California, teaching from the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus, the wisdom of the ancients, and the evolutionary science of mind. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. For more information about this ministry, please visit www.rev. Bates.tv or www.revbatesontheradio.org. You can also find me on YouTube.com by going to YouTube.com and typing in the search box, The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel. That's The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel, so you'll find over 100 of my radio broadcasts that you can listen to 24-7 in both English and Spanish. You can also go to MSN. Yahoo, Bing, and Google, and type in the search box, Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, and you'll find everything you want to find out about this ministry. Now, the way to a wonderful life is spiritual, not religious. As we go beyond religion, and we focus on those simple yet profound spiritual healing principles given to us by the Mastermind Jesus, so that we can believe in our prayer and the answer to it, for we believe and we know that God responds to us by corresponding to our faith and our belief that with God, all good things are possible. With God, all good things are possible. Now, you can send me your prayer requests, your questions, your comments about this program, and you can also send a tithe, a donation, or a faith offering in support of this radio ministry, and you can do that from the websites revbates.tv or revbates on the radio.org, or you can mail those to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. That's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. And you can leave me a telephone message in the Los Angeles area at 818 476 0088 or in Palm Springs at 760-778-5677. So once again, this is The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates coming to you live this morning from Palm Springs, California. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. We're going to begin our program as we always do with our prayer affirmation and a reminder of those words of the Mastermind Jesus to pray believing that it is, pray believing that you have it, pray believing that all things necessary for you to do those things, to be that thing that you choose to do or to be or to have, are yours right when you make that request, right when you make that claim that they are yours to experience. And that good desire of your heart that's coming through you from the Father will will give you that satisfaction in knowing that your relationship with God is not only, not only powerful, but it's eternal. So as we think think about those words of Jesus, it is done unto you as you believe. Let's keep our mind on that. As we believe in the good, that good shall reign supreme in our lives. So if you're not driving a vehicle or operating something mechanical, just pause for a moment, listen for that word, that phrase, or that statement that will stir up the spirit within you this morning. Let's begin by saying these words out loud. Say them out loud with me if you can. The living spirit is within me, and the spirit of God is upon me. Say that one more time. The living spirit is within me, and the spirit of God is upon me. And let's know together that this living spirit within me is my life, my health, my strength, and my vitality. It is the Christ within me which strengthens me. This living spirit within me is my supply. It prospers all my affairs and is limitless in supplying my good. I draw on the inexhaustible substance of spirit, which knows no limit. Abundance is my birthright, and I claim it now. The living spirit within me is my intelligence. It guides and directs me in all my ways ensuring that my every good desire is already complete. I acknowledge this as an accomplished fact now, right now. 
So I go forth today and every day with confidence and assurance and in the positive conviction that the living Spirit of God is within me and all is good in my world, and so it is, amen, and so it is, amen. What a blessing it is to believe those words, <clears throat> excuse me, and to see those words activated in our life experience. So once again, this is The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California. <clears throat> and our Way to a Wonderful Life message for today is titled, Being Grateful, Feeling Joy. Being Grateful, Feeling Joy. And I'm going to start with some words from the wonderful Florence Scovel Shin, and this is from her writings back in 1925, 1926, 1927, somewhere during that period of time. She writes, look with wonder at that which is before you. Look with wonder at that which is before you. Do not think how your good can be accomplished. Just give thanks that you already have received on the invisible plane. Therefore, the steps leading up to it are secure also. Look with wonder at that which is before you. So realize with, with, with me that that wonder that we take into our mind is that wonder of creation and how God has created all these things and that whatever good it is that we desire to experience, whatever good it is that we desire to see increased in our life, that wonder of the, of the magnificent power and spirit and intelligence of God will draw it into our life in a greater way. This past week, I presented several lessons on the radio, which, of course, are simulcast on the Internet from the writings of Florence Scovel Shan. After reading her insights into spiritual love and law, I felt such a great admiration for this woman who published her first book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, in 1925. She was unable to find a publisher for the book, so she published it herself. The book has sold millions of copies due to her easy-to-understand style of writing and the simple stories of faith documented within its pages. Now, the great lesson to be gained from her work is that our thoughts and our words can either keep us in tune with the infinite good or separate us from each other and therefore create a separation from our good. I was especially drawn to the words, look with wonder at that which is before you. And to me, this applies to everything in our lives, including all the people we come into contact with. As we view the activity and the people around us with the realization that all that we see is spirit having a human experience, that life itself, every form of life, Every living thing is spirit expressing itself in and through all that we see, all that we're aware of. We begin to feel that sense of wonder at it all. Think about the wonder of that little seed that can sprout into a corn stalk and produce a multiple, a multitude of kernels of corn, and each of those multitude of kernels of corn can become more corn, so there is no reason for for the world to ever be in want or ever to be in lack, that nature provides us the way that we just tap, we need to tap into this intelligence and it will find a way for us, an opening for us to have to do or to be that something that gives us more, that lets us have a greater sense of life. It is this sense of wonder that can make all the difference in our attitudes towards life and all the people we encounter in our lives. As we look with wonder, we lose the thoughts of judgment and begin to gain a greater sense that there is always something more than what the appearances give evidence to. Now, Emerson had faith that people are at their best when they're truly self-reliant and independent of the labels and limitations perpetuated by organized religion and political organizations. He believed that we shall accomplish our best when we let ourselves be inspired by the divine soul, and that's what Jesus did and Buddha did and Krishna did, all the great mystics did, and our looking with wonder will heighten our awareness of this inspiration. Just give thanks that you already have received on the invisible plane, and in those words from Florence Scovel Shin, there's that magic, magical quality that takes place in our mind when we, we, when we actually believe that we have received. 
Now, this, this reminds us of the instruction of the mastermind Jesus to put our faith to work for us in the realization that God can only do for us that which God can do through us. The power within us that is greater than the power in the world is our faith, our faith in the all-power of God. Dr. Joseph Murphy tells us that our desire is our Savior. Desire saves us from the dullness and from a lack of enthusiasm for life. Desire, just remember, that we, let's break that word down. I've said this over and over and over again throughout these lessons in the last few years. Desire is of, sire is father, it's of the father, it's of the spirit. So we know that desire comes to us to give us something to express more of the livingness, the givingness, and the forgivingness of God. Without the desire to do something, to be something, or to have something, life becomes routine and monotonous. And without the inspiration of faith to know that we can have, we can do, and we can be, that which we desire, our lives would take on an aura of hopelessness and desperation. Now, the great Eric Butterworth, in his book, The Universe is Calling, wrote, In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. God forgives as we forgive, but that is not entirely correct. For God doesn't really forgive because there is no unforgiveness in God. God is love. And through the attitude of forgiveness, we open ourselves to that love. Love is always and eternally present, but we block it with our resistance. Jesus' statement is like saying, the sun comes streaming in the window when we raise the blinds. But of course we know that the sun doesn't really come in, it simply shines, and we accept the light and warmth as we eliminate the barrier of the blinds. So this unforgiveness, there is no unforgiveness in God, and our natural state of living is to have no unforgiveness in us. And what does forgive mean? It's a simple thing, but we, we unfortunately, in our human experience, the human mind has made it very complex. Forgive means to give it up, to give it up. Whatever, whatever you have to forgive, it didn't happen in the present moment. It happened yesterday or the day before, or an hour ago, whatever it was, last week, last month, last year, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it is. Let that be given up in your mind and begin to focus on the good. Give up. For forgiveness means to give up. Give up all your old past hurts. Give up all your old past disappointments. Give up all those things you hold against anyone or what anyone is holding against you, and especially... Give up those things that you hold against yourself and be open and receptive. Look, in the look at the world with wonder and amazement that this intelligence that created us, that clothes our spirit in human form, that takes that oak tree and puts it in that little, that little seed that grows into this magnificent tree, that takes that kernel of corn and grows it into this multitude of kernels of corn that they, those kernels of corn can grow even greater, this, this intelligence that knows not only how many seeds are in an apple, but it knows how many apples are in the seed. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's far beyond the understanding and the grasp of the human mind. But as we know that it must be true, because when we look at nature, we see the truth, the evidence of it. In this simple analogy, Eric Butterworth gives us insight into why perhaps we do not receive that which we pray for. Perhaps we do not approach the Spirit with the right attitude, the right spirit. As we pray affirming that the givingness of this infinite is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, we realize that whatever good we pray for, with an intelligent understanding of the consequences of our prayer, and in the spirit of a willingness, a willingness to share the good that we receive, our prayer receives the power of being at one with the infinite good. As we possess in mind, we also possess our God guarantee that we shall receive the good results of our prayer soon enough. That spirit, that spirit of that omnipresent, always present, always available, just like the air that we breathe. We all breathe in the air. 
We inhale, assuming that there's air to breathe, even though we can't see it, we can't, we can't photograph it, we can't draw a picture of it. We believe it. Let's believe that the presence of God is right where we are, as the poet said, closer to us than breathing. Omnipotent means all power, not just power, but the all power of God. As it moves through our mind, our heart, and our soul, we can grasp that measure of it as we take in the wonder of it, we can grasp that measure of it that we, we require in the moment. If we consciously make ourselves aware of the sunshine that is available to everyone and look out into nature and see the evidence of even greater things, and we realize that this sunshine and all this good is available to everyone, it's available to both saints and sinners, good guys and bad guys, rich and poor, people of faith and atheists too, we are actively following the instruction of the mastermind Jesus, who said, look to nature, see the evidence of God's relationship to you. It's intelligent. That's the highest level of mind that we can get into as a human being, that God is intelligence, not intelligent, intelligence itself. So let us begin to trust in the infinite love of God, which is motivated by intelligence, to give to us and loose those ideas in our mind that create a separation from our good and a separation from this intelligence that created all that we see through man, through nature, and through infinite channels of expression that are beyond our human comprehension and awareness. Let us realize just how so very important these words of the mastermind Jesus are for all of us who seek to experience the abundant life, the wonderful life. We can read in the Gospel of John 7:24, do not judge by appearances, but judge with righteous judgment. The right judgment is that God's givingness knows no limits. God's givingness knows no withholding. God's givingness is unconditional love, far beyond our human perceptions of love, far beyond our human understanding and awareness of love. And through that loving faith in God, that loving faith in God's power to work for us, through us, as us, that loving faith that God intelligence will always guide us, direct us to the right solutions, the right paths, to open doors of opportunity and create possibilities in our mind that, that will appeal to us and that we want experience. When we start thinking about that and start letting the wonder of it enter into our mind, then we start feeling spontaneously grateful and feeling joy. And then miracles become normal and natural. We don't say that's a miracle. We just realize within our heart and the quietness of our soul that it is God expressing himself in us, as us, and through us in the most natural way and doing the most natural things, even the simple things that come to us to do every day. Our faith is beyond, the, the power of our faith is beyond anything we can imagine. And sometimes we don't even realize how powerful our faith is until we go through experiences that test our faith. You know, I, I always, always think about that passage in the, in the book of Job, in the holy scriptures, in the ancient scriptures, where it says, when I, thou hast tried me, I shall come forth as gold. When thou hast tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And when I first started my ministerial instruction at the Hollywood Church on Sunset Boulevard, I studied with the great Dr. Dominic A. Polifrone, who was the spiritual director of that church and had and received his doctorate from Dr. Irving Seal back in New Jersey. And I'll always remember and never forget the faith that he was instilling in each of us in that, in that class. But as things happen sometimes in life, Dr. Dominic Polifrone had a <clears throat> severe stroke, that paralyzed the whole, whole side of his body to where he couldn't walk, he couldn't talk clearly, he couldn't write, he couldn't do anything. And if he followed that and followed it, following up that severe stroke with another smaller stroke and a couple of small heart attacks. And during the last 15 years, 
he's been recovering, and now he talk, calls me weekly, and he speaks to me with the clearest of voice and always in the most positive, most positive state of mind, with a great mental motivation to, to continue to do the givingness of the spirit within him, to give out his message of hope and trust and faith to others, and to always respond when anyone else, anyone else requires prayer. So this last week was my birthday, and he sent me a birthday card. And along with that birthday card, he sent me his November affirmation. And I'm going to share this affirmation with you. Now, this is coming from a man who had such a severe stroke that his whole right side of his body was paralyzed. He could no longer walk. He couldn't write. He couldn't talk clearly. He really couldn't even uh, comprehend clearly. And now, at this point in time, he wrote this prayer affirmation, and I want to share it with each and every one of you so you can realize no matter what it is that we may go through, there is something within us that is greater than any experience we may have gone through. This is from Dr. Dominic Colophone. I'm going to read it word for word. He writes, I am thankful for all of my many blessings. To God be the glory. I am forever grateful for each obstacle that I must deal with every day. It does not matter whether they are small or large. What really matters is my consciousness of the absolute truth. That truth determines the outcome of each and every situation that I am facing. I am thankful for all of my many blessings. I enter each day with a prayer treatment, and then I go from there to what I must deal with, knowing that my thinking is in charge. Right thinking overcomes every new obstacle. Personal feelings have nothing to do with it. The absolute truth is the only thing that matters. So I meet each day's challenge as an opportunity to learn more about this creative process. Everything works together for my highest good. I am thankful for all of my many blessings. Today, I am inspired to find new ways to uplift others with support and encouragement. I give thanks for all the love I give and receive. Family, friends, and pets are priceless gifts from God. This is a special season. I am grateful for the gifts that comes my way. We read in Matthew 7, 8, For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. I am appreciative of the rich demonstrations manifesting for me right now. And so it is. That's from the great Dr. Dominic A. Polifrone. And I'm so glad that I can share that with you and share his journey of faith and healing that he's demonstrated in his life. Let's just break, take into our mind that we have made life too complicated. Our sense of being grateful and feeling joy comes from our consciously expressing the truth of our purpose in life. And our purpose, our purpose is the same for everyone. Let's not make it complicated, no matter what it, what it is that we may do. No matter whether we live in a studio apartment or we live in a 23-room mansion. No matter whether we have a million dollars in, in Facebook stock or whether we are getting by from paycheck to paycheck. That purpose is the very same for each and every one of us because God is no respecter of persons. No one receives any favors from God. We are all living in the same life experience of being in the Spirit. In Him we live and move and have our being, and this Him is Spirit, it's life, it's truth. As Dr. Dominic expressed in that prayer treatment. It is the truth that matters. The absolute truth of my being is I am spirit having a human experience. And our purpose is the same, the same purpose for everyone. And it is to express the livingness, the givingness, and the forgivingness of God in all that we do. In everything that we, every experience that we have in life, to realize that we are here to express that, the livingness, to know that we're alive to life. That life is rewarding us, not, not for, for, for our efforts, but rewarding us as a gift to us for this thing called life that's expressing through us. That God is, 
expressing life through us to the level that we allow our mind to embrace and embody the truth that this livingness, this givingness, and this forgivingness of God is our, is our highest, higher self, the highest self, our highest calling. It is the nature of God within us. It is that image, likeness of God seeking to express more and more good through everyone. Our conscious decision to more fully express the forgivingness, the givingness, and the livingness of the Spirit opens a multitude of channels for us to realize the feeling of joy and a genuine sense of being grateful for all things that we experience in life. Let us always remember and never forget those words that speak to our eternal, changeless, and universal truth. And this is from the book of Isaiah 65, 24, where we can read, Before they call, I will answer. Before they call, I will answer. And let's go back and look at those words one more time from the great Florence Scovel Sin. Look with wonder at that which is before you. Look with wonder. Don't go thinking you have to climb on a mountain or go to India or go to, go to somewhere else. Look with wonder at what is before you right where you are right now and do not think how your good can be accomplished. Just give thanks that you have already received on the invisible plane, all things that you can believe are yours, that you can claim as yours. Therefore, the steps leading up to it are secure also. As we eliminate in our mind any thoughts of comparisons or competition, any thoughts of obstructions or barriers, any thoughts of taking something away from anyone else, any thought of having anything that diminishes anyone, including ourselves, that that desire is a divine idea that will manifest perfectly with grace and ease in our life if we just look with wonder and look with a heart that's filled with great gratitude and filled with a feeling of joy. Being grateful, feeling joy will magnetize this power of the Spirit in us, as us, and through us. This being grateful and feeling joy will magnify the intelligence of the Spirit as it brings to our awareness a greater a realization that there's always a solution, there's always a way for whatever it is that we seek to do, to be, or to have, or to move through. Let's allow ourselves to believe today and every day that we can believe in our prayer and the answer to it, because that prayer is coming from our consciousness, from our conscious awareness of our relationship with God, with the good. And as we draw into our mind that this good, this good is ours to claim. And just as Jesus said, we can ask and we can receive. Why? Because if we ask intelligently, intelligence shall respond to us in the right and perfect way each and every day for whatever it is that we require to live the abundant life, the wonderful life, and the joyful life. Let's go back to Eric Butterworth before we leave the program this morning. He writes, In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Let's emulate or let's imitate that attribute of unforgiveness that's in God and let no unforgiveness be within us. Let's give it up. Forgive means to give it up. Give up those things that create barriers and obstructions to our good and to those people around us, and realize once and for all that today is the day. Today is the day for my consciousness to be free. Today is the day for me to allow all things necessary, every idea, every door of opportunity, every seeming possibility of increasing the joy in my life, the gratitude in my life, the happiness in my life, the success in my life. Today is my day to let my faith make me whole. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me today. It's been my great pleasure to have you. And I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on KTYM AM 1460 Radio and at KTYM.com on the Internet. So as you can find on webbaitsontheradio.com, 
O-R-G. You'll find my full radio schedule, the Way to Wonderful Life radio program is broadcast seven days a week, simulcast on the radio seven days a week, and you can find us at 7.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, 7.30 Pacific time on the Internet. Just go go to RevBates on the radio.org. Don't forget to go to YouTube.com and find those over 100 radio broadcasts that you can listen to 24-7. We're out of time. I'm going to bless you today. Bless you always. God bless you. God bless us all.